Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today in this video. In today's video, we're gonna to talk to you about auditing and it's kind of a dry subject and chances are you're probably not watching this video unless you got yourself into a situation where you need to audit. So in any event, please like and subscribe this video and make any comments. I'll be sure to uh, monitor them and then of course answer any as best as I can. So without further ado, let's dive into this. I am in a, uh, an environment specifically, if we look up here, it's called Lab 0001. And I have a single application called Lab Rat, and this is my Lab Rat app. And so I'm gonna go ahead and let's uh, just look and see what this thing does. So we can look at records, we can, uh, after we look at the records, we can actually modify them and update them. And then of course we can delete records as well. And so simple CRUD operations here, uh, obviously we can add new records. And then of course there's a dashboard to look at some statistical information specifically about customer demographics. All right, so that is our very down and dirty simple app. So with regards to auditing, let's talk about what we need to do to look at. Maybe we've got data that we want to modify or uh, monitor who makes deletes and changes and that kind of stuff. So first thing you need to do is come over here in your environment and click open this gearbox. And I want you to take notice of admin center and advanced settings. We're going to use both of those in this video and you're going to need to use both of them as well. But I want to take you down the steps or the proper steps and path to make sure you don't get yourself into trouble. So let's go ahead and click on the admin center. And the reason we're going here is because we want to twirl open this resources and you want to look at capacity. Okay, so this uh, screen here. So let's look at the date. Today is uh, June the 30th, 2021. That's the date of the recording and that's how this screen looks. This screen and the entire platform is constantly changing. So somewhere in the future, this screen may look slightly different to you or for you. In any event, what you want to do is know that right now on the summary tab, this is my tenant level. It doesn't matter how many environments I have. If you want environments, you got to come over here to Dataverse and here's all your environments. But the reason you want to come here is you want to look at this thing here. The Dataverse, as far as you're concerned, based on what you're paying for in your tenant, you have database capacity. So I have almost 12 gigabytes of storage capacity in my uh, for my database information. If I store files in my CDS, so one of the column types is of type file. Um, that's how and when this is used. And so any files that I store in Dataverse, I have up to 30 gigabytes of data that I can store for files. And now the purpose of this video is logging. So right now I'm not using anything for my logging, which is good because I need to turn it on to troubleshoot or sleuth some issue. And I want to make sure that there's plenty of capacity. Now for you, you know, the situations are going to wind up, uh, the worst case scenario situation for you is going to be that your log information is full. You've got a bunch of environments, you're running out of space. So either you need to clean out some logs for some other environments, or what you need to do is somehow find uh, a way to get more resources by purchasing more uh, capacity. So in any event, hopefully that's not you. If you want to look down at the granular specifics on an environmental level, you can go ahead and go into here and this tells you about your log usage, file usage, database uses, and any last updates that were done to the environment. Okay, so that's enough of that. That's the only reason you need to go in here. Now, to turn on auditing, get into the auditing, we need to go into the advanced settings. Now, this is gonna pop us over into the Dynamics 365 area. Now, I want you to notice how fast mine opened. Um, a lot of times, people will go ahead and they'll click on this advanced setting, and when they do, this screen will just spin and spin and spin and spin and say loading. So if you're interested, I'll tell you, and I'll divert really quickly. Microsoft writes this application in ASP.NET. You can tell because of the extension ASPX. Anything that runs in ASPX typically runs in Internet Information Server or on a Windows web server called IIS. In IIS, there's this thing called an application app pool, and it basically will die or put itself to sleep if it's not used for 20 minutes. And because you very rarely if ever go into this screen, it has to spin up and start. It's like an application on start event, right? And so it takes a while for it to happen. So if you 
click on this cog like I showed you and click on advanced setting and this window just spins forever just give it about 20 seconds to 30 seconds if it's still spinning close the tab return and come over here to advanced settings again and it should launch fairly quickly just like it does for me I know that was a lot of explanation but that's the reason why it happens the way that it does and maybe when you understand it you can be a little bit more forgiving I guess uh, when it happens and Microsoft in my opinion should have fixed this I don't know how many times and or make sure this thing is kept alive now I know that is crazy because that means all of the resources need to be used up on their servers and that's counterintuitive but in any event uh, it shouldn't be stuck like that but if it does for you that's what you do all right now that you're here let's get into what we wanted to talk about you need to twirl up in the settings area and under the system category at the very bottom there's this thing called auditing you want to use essentially every single one of these options on the screen but you need to use them in the right step the first step you need to do is to go and turn on global auditing the second step you need to do is come over here and enable the entity that you want to turn auditing on for finally when you do activity and you want to review your logs you can come over here and view the activities in the log summary and finally if you want to manage your logs by purging log files because remember I told you about the capacity issue you may have to go in into an environment and you may have to purge out the logs that show up in this list so with that being said let's take a look if you go ahead and try to accidentally maybe try to enable auditing uh, without going ahead and uh, understanding what's going on here so let me digress very quickly again so I showed you this application called LabRat and so the table that runs my LabRat it in my simple app is and I've got this filtered by custom too by the way if I turn it on to all I get all the junk in the dataverse that comes with it but I just want my custom tables so here's LabRat data and this is the one that I want to turn auditing on because my application only uses this one custom table or custom entity okay and so if I come over here and I twirl this open again and again see how long it takes to spin it uh, these things can take a while and I'm gonna go down and scroll down to my L's let me go back up okay so lab rat data there's a section down here called data something or other data services and here's auditing if I try to turn this on you need to read this little triangle it says the entity will not be audited until auditing is enabled for the organization so if you see this then that means you went out of step that means you need to come over here to global audit settings and you need to enable auditing and then you need to turn on user audit access this will give you information about who done one where I always suggest you uh, turn that on in any event so now with that on we can go back into here and we can turn on it uh, auditing so I'm going to scroll back down to my lab rat data and let's go down to data and let's enable auditing and that's on by default all fields are going to be enabled for auditing on this table and that's fine and I've got change tracking turned on so all this is by default the other thing I want to do is I want to enable single record auditing okay if I turn on multiple record auditing screens like this with lots of information or if I had a grid where I could edit like a Excel spreadsheet that would enable auditing for for that type of scenario um, I don't want to do that I just am really worried about single record views right now so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it the way that I have it uh, so let me go back over here <clears throat> but again if you have a scenario where you want to audit multiple records in grid edit mode or things of that nature then you might want to turn this on but just know that it is going to log excessively and so you need to use that in very special use cases especially if you have limited space okay so now with that turned on Come on, you can do it. I think it's gonna be good to go. Yep, there it is. Nothing spinning, everything looks good. All right, so I now have all of my stuff done. So let's go into my app and let's do new. And we're gonna call this audit record. Easy for me to spell and type at the same time. Audit record, what is it? I don't know just putting any old stupid thing in here okay and we'll hit submit so that'll save let's search for that record 
Let's go in and modify that record. Let's give it, give it a category. All of that looks good. And then finally, let's delete the record. Okay, so now that we've done all of that, and we'll close up the app, let's go back into advanced settings. And so let's go back into settings, use the pull down under system, go to auditing. If we go into the audit log management, we'll see that it's here, but we don't really have to ever go into here because of the way that the audit logs are set up, unless we're gonna manage the logs, delete the logs, purge the logs, things of that nature. What we wanna do is do an audit, right? We wanna see who's deleted what data. So we come in here into the summary and I can see right now, here's my last action, delete. Okay, and it's been changed by me. And so I, now I know who deleted it and what they did, but you can also enable filtering because obviously, you know, mine is a stupid little app and it's just me playing with it right now. So a real world app is gonna have hundreds, tens, thousands of users, uh, potentially globally accessing an app. And so there'll be a lot of noise into this. So the first thing I need to do is come over here and I want to filter. And what do I wanna filter on? I wanna filter on deletes. So I'll go ahead and click that. And so here we go. All right, here's a delete around this time frame. So that's probably what you wanna do is narrow down the event. You wanna narrow down the time frame that the event occurred in. And then to figure out what the record is, unfortunately, you have to click on the activity and here it is. Audit record, wait, you can see this is the record as it looked as I was editing and editing it. So now we know what the record was, we know who did it, we know when they did it, and so this helps us figure out what's going on in troubleshooting. Uh, additionally, this could be a rogue process that you have connected to your database, uh, such as Power Automate with a service account. If something happened here, you'll know that it wasn't an error in the application. You'll also know that it wasn't an error in any other thing. It was intentional. It's just you have bad change management practices likely, and you just don't really know what's connected to your app doing what. So I can't say this enough. Make sure you have good change management processes and procedures because when you use this in conjunction with this, then you can kind of figure out, oh, okay, this happened at this time. We have an issue and or a bug in the uh, software. We got an issue in the procedure. We've got an issue with a user that needs training. Um, all kinds of information can come out. But in any event, I hope this uh, video was helpful for you. This is how you enable log and logging and uh, editing and changing all of the different areas. And also making sure that you are very, very careful about not filling up your capacity. Because if you do that, obviously things will just stop working as you expect them to, and or you'll have data loss as a result of that. Now, uh, as a quick aside before we end the video, when we come back over here, you know, auditing log management, you can also automate some of this to some extent. So I'm not gonna get a, get into that in that video, but you can certainly Google search how to, you know, audit and prune and manage this thing so that the logs essentially are on a rolling type of schedule. So that's it again for this video. We'll see you in a future one. I'm David Soden. Have a great day.